Previously, I explored making eyeglasses and correcting my vision to see clearly. For my next project, I'm gonna to go to the next step in the evolution of optics and allow myself to see beyond human sight, to see the unseen, and make a microscope. The invention of the microscope helped revolutionize science and led to the discovery of microorganisms and germ theory, which has helped save countless lives. For some assistance making my microscope, I sought the advice of Max at Foldscope. Foldscope was invented as a cheap and affordable option for microscopes. Made mostly out of paper, they cost less than a dollar to produce, yet allows you to view at 140 times magnification, making it possible to see bacteria and cells. Hi Max, thanks for talking to me. So for my next project, I'm looking to make a microscope from scratch. Compared to a large or expensive microscope you normally see in a class from a lab, you guys went with a different format with your fold scope. Can you tell me about that? The idea behind a microscope is really simple, which is when light hits a boundary, say between air and glass, it bends. And you can use this property to take a small image and make it much larger. So most research microscopes you see are complex microscopes, which use a series of lenses to provide magnification and correct for aberrations. But you can get away with a simpler strategy, which is actually just to use one very small spherical lens, and this is called a simple microscope. And so the smaller the lens, the sharper light is bent when it crosses the boundary between air and glass, and the more magnification you get. So for instance, with Foldscope, it is 2.38 millimeters in diameter, and it provides 140x magnification. And so these simple microscopes are actually really similar to microscopes that were made by a Dutch draper named Antony van Leeuwenhoek back in the 17th century. But van Leeuwenhoek used the same principle as us, which is actually to use just a simple, small lens. So Antony van Leeuwenhoek actually discovered many microorganisms just by looking at pond water using his simple microscope and is kind of considered the sort of founder of microbiology. So what exactly goes into making a microscope like yours? If you think about it, there's not too many things you need to do, right? You need to be able to hold a sample in place and provide magnification with that lens. But then most of the other functions besides the lens can be provided by paper. And so we use a folded sheet of paper to hold the lens and hold the slide and then to align the two. And it turns out that paper, if you think about, you can actually get very reproducibly precise structures out of that. And then the other important thing is to be able to adjust the focus by changing the distance between the lens and whatever sample you have. And one way we do with the fold scope is to have the lens attached to a piece of paper that flexes. And so you can use your thumbs to actually stretch or pull this piece of paper with the lens, and that's how you can focus. Well, that's really amazing. I think a design like yours would work really well for my project. Awesome. Yeah, well, if you'd like, we can send you a sample of the fold scope if you'd like to use that as a template. Yeah, that'd be really great. Thanks for your help again. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Good luck with everything. Thanks to Max's advice. I now have an idea of what I need to do to make my microscope. But first, I need to overcome the problems I had last time when I made my glass from scratch, which resulted in less than clear glass. The key three ingredients I used for glass last time were sand, limestone, and potash. One of the issues with my first attempt at glass was the likely impurities of my ingredients. Pure potash is a white powder, but the stuff I had last time was more gray-green in color. So I needed to give this a second try. Once again, I used hardwood ashes to extract the potash from. However, rather than burning a ton of wood this time, just for the ashes, I worked with a nearby restaurant, Doolittle's Woodfire Grill, who was able to provide me with a large supply of their leftover ashes. Same as last time, I'll soak the ashes in water and evaporate the potash from the water solution. However, this time, to reduce any chance of other stray chemicals that might get concentrated from the tap water, I used only distilled water. Once soaked, I used a strainer to remove the charcoal and other trash that floated on the surface. That's not charcoal. Then I let the sediment settle to the bottom and pour the remaining liquid into a pot through a cloth to strain out any remaining charcoal or other debris. Then over the course of several hours, I boiled the liquid down. Unlike last time, I let the solution sit overnight again and separate once more. On the surface, 
was a nearly completely clear liquid that he then slowly evaporated and crystallized. Then grinding up this final result, I had a much more promising batch of potash ready. Another impurity that affected my last batch of glass was trace amounts of iron in the sand that I collected. This resulted in a bluish tint to my glass. This time, I tried using a strong magnet to extract any trace iron. After several passes through, I was able to extract a surprisingly decent amount of magnetic debris, which I think I'll save for a future project. Now knowing that you can extract iron this way, it's very likely you'll be seeing this again in a future episode. Instead of using limestone this time, I thought I'd try a different source of the same chemical, eggs. I've collected a variety of different eggs so far in my quest, and all bird eggs are at least the 95% calcium carbonate that I'm after. So I thought I'd give this source a try. With new, more pure sources for all of my ingredients, it's time to melt them into glass. Previously, I was able to work with a glass blower, Michael. Unfortunately, his schedule was too packed to let us use his kiln again, and no other glass blower that we reached out to was willing to let us use theirs. So we were forced to go a little lower tech, and Michael lent us the equipment to build our own makeshift kiln. Using a bunch of ceramic bricks and a propane torch, we were able to get something that should hopefully work. After waiting a few hours for the kiln to get to the right temperature, I mixed together the three ingredients and added it to the kiln. After a while, the glass started to melt and turned into a thick liquid. One thing we noted from my first attempt was that the glass lower in the crucible was actually a lot clearer than the top portion that we poured from. We suspected this was because the potash sunk to the bottom. To counteract this, we made sure to mix the glass periodically. With all the improvements to my ingredients and knowing to mix it now, I was feeling pretty optimistic about this attempt. After going for over 10 hours and getting late into the night, it looked like we were getting pretty close. I attempted to pull a strand of glass to make the lens from, which I then let cool overnight before the next step. The next step to actually making my microscope lens is to pull a thin strand of glass and then melt it into a bead. To practice, I used some glass rods. Heating them to their melting point under a propane torch, I pulled them until they were super thin and then broke off one end. Then I heated that end until it started to form a bead. The surface tension in the glass helps it to form into a sphere. And then once it's reached the desired size, I remove it from the flame and snap it off. Did you lose it? I have to be careful though, because if it goes flying, there's no way I'll be able to find it. After several attempts and a few different sized lenses, I gave the glass that I actually made a shot. With a few different options for lenses, now I just need to make the body of the microscope. Thanks to Foldscope, I know the paper can make a great body, which I just happened to have already made when I previously attempted to make a book from scratch. To make this cotton paper, I traveled to a cotton farm in Texas where I handpicked my own cotton. Then I used a gin to remove the seeds from the rest of the fiber. The fiber was then ran through a beater machine to break it up into smaller bits. Then it was placed into a tub of water and a mold was pulled through it, forming the sheet of paper. Lastly, it's pressed in a vise and then hung to dry. Thanks to the example Foldscope sent me, I'm able to use it as a pattern to make mine. Now, I just need to put everything together. I can try it with my actual glass. So yeah, that's, that's completely opaque. So in the end, this attempt at making glass was not any more successful than my last, unfortunately. The biggest culprit I suspect for this one was the kiln itself. I think if we could have baked it hotter and for longer, we would have gotten much better result. Over now, it's developed a yellow tint, which I'm not sure why this happened, but there's a chance it might be from trace amounts of sulfur in the eggshells, which can cause a yellow tint to glass. So despite all of this, I still haven't managed to make good glass for optics. However, with the glass rods, I was actually able to make pretty good lenses. 
Okay, it actually works pretty good. I can definitely seal up paramecium. Wow, that worked a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> I can actually see the paramecium in this slide, which the paramecium is the original microorganism that Van Leeuwenhoek actually discovered and was able to create the theory of microorganisms from. So while the glass was yet another failure, I did manage to make an actual working microscope. And that itself, I think, is a pretty cool fact that I was able to make something that I can see a whole invisible world with. So give me your best suggestions in the comments. And next week, I'll do a follow-up video where I explore what all I can see with this microscope. Thanks for watching. I want to give a shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon. Without them, this series would not be possible. If you enjoy what we're doing, consider supporting us. And lastly, if you want your own fold scope, we're actually doing a giveaway still. All you need to do is share any of our videos and tag us, and we'll randomly choose a winner at the end of the week.